The next thing they feel like, subhanallah, so I went and making dua to Allah and I sat down. This is called the help of Allah. Not from me, nothing at all. The Imam was speaking about helping people in... Hi guys, you're welcome. Thanks for clicking. Mufti Mek is going to give us a true life story of how Allah answered his dua instantly. You know, I want to give you one simple example. I was traveling in one of the Middle Eastern countries a long time back. And I happened to cross the border. And when I was coming back, I wanted to cross back into the country that I was, that I had left from. Mm. And it was the time of Jumu'ah. And they told me, you have a Zimbabwean passport, you actually need a visa to go in. And I told him, but hang on, I was here about 10 days back mm. when I was crossing and no one told me this. Oh. I crossed and there was no visa. He said, no, the law has just changed two days ago. Now I have a flight to catch. Oh. And I'm making dua to Allah. And I say, Ya Allah, help me. Mm. Ya Allah, I'm in need. Here, my, my entire fixed. family, they are not fixed. affected because obviously they have a different nationality. But with me, subhanallah, help me, Ya Allah, what am I going Single to do? I've got a out, flight to catch. Lord. And I need to return home. And so it was the time of Jumu'ah and the Adhan went. And mashallah, there was a masjid in the border post. And so I went and making dua to Allah and I sat down. And the Imam spoke about, now this is called the help of Allah. Not from me, nothing at all. The Imam was speaking about helping people in desperation. Helping people in need and how Allah will assist you if you assist someone who's desperate, who's in need. And guess what? There was a man next to me who greeted me. And I greeted him back. And subhanallah, I greeted him, I acknowledged him and so on. And at the same time, in fact, I greeted him just before the, the talk had started. And then I greeted him immediately after the talk. And I, I nodded my head, smiled at him and so on. And we started our salah. We were standing in the saf, straightening, you know, the, the feet and the, 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 the toes and whatever else. And I started my salah and I ended. And when I finished, I made a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, I don't know. It's only you that's going to help. And so what happened is, I came out, I had hope in my heart, but I was also making a plan B, you know, to say, let's go back yeah, and we'll do this. We'll change it. tickets, perhaps leave from the, the, another city altogether. And as I went in, I told this brother who was behind the counter that, look, you know what? Please, I need your help. He says, only my boss can do it for you. So can I see him? He says, yeah, well, you can, maybe. You can enter that door and if he's there, you're lucky. So I went by the door, there was someone cleaning. Knocked on the door, the door opened. Who was the boss? The man who sat next to me just at the time of the khutbah and salah. And he read right next to me. And guess how I started my story? Assalamu alaikum. You know, you can, you can remember the smile, can't you? Wow, you know? yeah, you so I looked at him and I'm, I'm saying to myself, let me try and choose the best way of convincing him such that he will not be able to say no if he has a heart. I said, you know, mashallah, I'm in need. I'm desperately in need. And I'm convinced Allah will send the help. And I hope and I pray that help can come through you at least so that inshallah, you know, I will be able to at least cross him. He looks at me and he thought for a moment and I'm quite certain that the words of the Imam were ringing in his head. And then he tells me something. He says, you know, you're right. It's only from Allah, not from me. He wrote on my, in my passport, this man has been given oral permission to enter the country. You know, the Arab nation, some of them, they have this. I don't know about now, but I'm talking of quite a while back. So, he, and he wrote it. I went to the front. The man looked at it and smiled. He stamped it and let me cross. As simple as ABC. Has it? Oh, but my life was coming to an end, basically, if that didn't happen. If not to an end, but what I mean is, you know, it you was going to be, be quite difficult. Yes, and then I told myself, I said, you know, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine if we didn't greet. Imagine if I just you said, imagine if he didn't greet. It was his quality. He was a big boss. I didn't even know. But he greeted and this is what helped. And I greeted back. And this is why, remember, sometimes we are arrogant. We don't want to. It's shaitan that overtakes us. We are human. We need to check it again. Make sure you remove it. Fight it. Fight it. Be humble. You know, I've seen people with mega wealth. Mm, and you never simple. pick up that this man has wealth. Mm -hmm. And I've seen people with next to nothing. And they, they have their first thousand dollars. And next thing they feel like, subhanallah, so I'm proud. Bill Gates. Allahu Akbar. Mm -hmm. Bill Gates. I always hey. used to wonder why Bill Gates is so wealthy. Wow. But then I realized that the dollar in America is called the bill. Have you thought of that? <laughs> it's called the bill. So he's the one who has the key to the door. Allahu Akbar. That's perhaps him. But for us, Allah has the key.
Allah has the key to the door. We don't need the green bills, mashallah. We need entry into Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness of the dunya as well as goodness of the akhirah. Wow, ah, oh my God. I'm so moved by his, you know, experience. Like, this is why they said, don't judge the book by its cover. And be humble. Humility will not cost you anything on this earth. You just need to be humble. You just need to, you need to be simple. The richest people on this earth, they dress simple. They behave quite simple. They are always humble. So they said that if you miss judge them you might lose your blessing you might lose the chance of getting help that is how helpers come they come in different ways you don't have to see your helper looking elegant looking luxurious no so like you said he needed to catch a flight and they had to ban him from traveling because they are not allowing them to travel at that point in time just in case anything happened Oh, let me have a plan B. But he was focused and he kept on telling himself that I must travel. And he gave his dua. He just prayed to God. God, help me. I need your help. You are, you are my first and last. You are the only one that can help me in this time of need. One thing I learned from this video is that he surrender everything to the hands of Allah. You need to surrender everything to the hands of God. No matter the situation. Your story might not be in this, in this part, in this situation. Your story might be job. You know, admission, marriage, it can be any other thing. Just submit everything to the hands of God and let God be the driver. Let God take the wheel. And there was a man sitting close to him. He greeted the man very well. He was humble. They communicated, not knowing that the person he greeted was one of the big boss, like the highest boss in the company. Assuming he ignored the man or he looked down on him based on the fact that the man was dressing simple, that's how he would have lost, you know, the help. You get it? So in this life, don't look down on anybody don't judge people by how they dress so don't you ever do that that's the worst thing you can ever do judging people by how they dress or just looking at them from afar and just concluding from your mind ah this person is proud this person no you can't just conclude some people might look like they are proud but when you come close to them you notice that they are very very humble so humility matters just imagine how musimek had to humble himself interact with the man well respected him so later when he was interviewed he not got to know that oh this man has a very big position in this complaint. He's, also, he's a boss here. He's smart. You know that kind of thing where you know that, oh, God has, has finally answered your prayer. You know when you know that your prayers have been answered and you know that there's a way out, you will smile, you will be happy. So that's what happened to Mr. Meg. He was so happy. He was so, you know, excited. He spoke to him calmly, respectfully. He was being, you know, humble about it. He was not, you know, proudness will not take you anywhere. Pride will not take you anywhere. It's not good to be proud. It's not good to be proud. You need to humble. Humility matters. Then from there, the man said, oh, don't worry. There's no problem. We are all serving one God. Allah will make it possible. Oh, thank God. This, the man was happy to help. He saw the faith Mufti make have in God. He saw the belief he has in Allah. Then from there, they gave him the chance to travel. That was how his dwell was answered instantly. This is a big, powerful message. I learned a lot from his message letting us know that if you are in a situation don't give up when you find yourself in a situation don't give up pray to god instantly or you know wait hold on don't be there's some people they they, they miss their blessing as we saw somebody else and they told you cannot travel because it's against uh, their laws or if another person they'll start insulting them oh this is after i book my flight ticket and then i spent so much money at the end of the day you still lose you will not still travel because you were not being calm about it you're not being respectful about it but the man actually sat down, calmed himself down, thought about it. What should I do next? Then he noticed that, oh, let me talk to God. Let me put everything to the hands of God. And everything became an history. Everything was settled. Wow, I really enjoyed watching you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts. Ah, man, this is powerful. Let me know your thoughts about it. Don't forget to smash the subscribe button for more. Like, share, comment. I'll see you in the next one.